Hola, mujeres. Today, we're so excited to be here with Candy Isabel, and we will hear more about her. But we just want to let you know on the, the post that we saw on her Instagram, which is, don't take for granted the progress you have made previously. You are one temptation away from losing it all. And it's like, I know we, you guys heard our, in one of our previous episodes that John and I expressed like, hey, we don't feel like we have accomplished anything and we just want to do more, but we feel stuck. It's like, are we re doing anything at all? And it's like, hey, we're moms, et cetera. But I know Candy and I will get more into that. But just want to give you a little quick bio on Candy. Is Candy Savin is a first generation immigrant from the Dominican Republic, a veteran, and the founder and CEO of Kamai Strategies. Growing up in Grand Rapids, Michigan, she has had a lifetime of experience and personal involvement in the communities that she serves. Candy is passionate about community and advocating for those who don't, see, don't have a seat at the table. She recognizes the barriers and adversity <laughs> many communities face because at one point it was her reality too. She is a product of the same environments she looks to help and advocate for. Candy asks the tough questions and doesn't mind being in the hot seat when it's the time to stand up for what is right, even if that means being the only one to say so. She is strategic, planned out, and loves to see ideas come to life. Candy is married and has two beautiful children. So welcome, Candy. Thank you so much for being here with us on Dos Latinas today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here um, and just, yeah, to talk about my passions. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So tell us a little bit about you, your background, like what's your why and an inspiration to become a nonprofit consultant and turn into your own business and personally empowering women to be authentic. Yeah, so um, my background, um, I grew up in, in Grand Rapids, like you said it in my bio, um, lived there up until two years ago when we recently um, relocated to Georgia. Um, so in Grand Rapids, I, you know, I went to school and I have a bachelor's and a master's in um, family life education. So a lot of that is, is sort of like a, um, a teaching degree, but on uh, different life skills. And so I was able to apply that plus getting into sort of a nonprofit sector and um, getting into like case management services and working directly with families one-on-one. -on -one. Um, those two things, when, when they merged together, I started to see something that was happening. And so what I started to see was that I was able to help these families one-on-one -on, -one on a daily basis and maybe providing them resources and things like that. But that really wasn't changing the system. And I knew um, once I, you know, had so many years into the nonprofit sector that I wanted to do actual change and started to work in changing systems at a macro level instead of at a, you know, like one-on-one -on -one personal level. And so this was my last couple of years of having a, a normal job. I started to sort of just kind of calculate things. I was already doing some consulting work. And I remember one day after coming back from a workshop that I had just did, I sat in the parking lot of my job and I was like, if I can get these many more of this kind of contract, this would like replace my salary for the year. And that was, I think, maybe probably like two two years before I had my daughter. Um, and so that was kind of when I just started feeling like, okay, this is not, you know, I, I, I have always, which is something that a lot of people don't know about me, but I've always struggled with having a normal job. I don't think I've ever had a job where I haven't had issues <laughs> with either a boss or a supervisor or the people that I work with um, just because I'm very outspoken and I don't believe that one person is above another. Um, so even, you know, as a supervisor, boss role, like we are all on an, on an even plane and we're all team members and not everyone um, sees it like that. So when I was pregnant with my daughter, I um, decided I was not going to go back to work. Um, and I was very, and I am very blessed. I'm lucky to have the husband that I do that um, supported me and that, you know, that's, that's a huge thing to have people in your support system to know like where you're going, what you're doing, what you want to do. And, um, having people to back you up on that. And so I decided I'm not going back to work. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what this is going to look like, but I know that I just had my daughter. I wanted to be home with my daughter and I had just had her um, in March. So I had like my maternity leave and I worked at a school. So 
then the summer came and I had this whole summer off. So then I had, you know, kind of that whole summer and I was with her for around six months before I was like, okay, like now I'm, we're kind of, you know, running low on money. So I need to do something. Um, and so I kind of started looking for jobs a little bit, but I, I reminded myself that that's not what I wanted to do. And so I applied for my first um, sort of like contract job just to see, you know, what it felt like. Is this where I want to be? And immediately I knew that that's, that's what I, that's, it's what I wanted. It aligned with, you know, me wanting to be home home, spending more time with my kids, having my own time, having no one above me saying, this is how you should be doing your work, um, feeling more value. That's that that was huge for me. Um, I feel like sometimes in the certain roles that we have, we aren't valued enough. Our word is questioned. And as a, um, a consultant, people hire me for my word. People hire me for, you know, to teach them things. Um, and so my, my, my values never questioned there. And I, I feel like that not having that in our lives is it really tears us down, right? That's what creates those um, dialogues that we have in our heads sometimes of if I if I am worth doing this or if I'm doing the right thing is because you you have these people over you all of the time. And so um, one of the biggest things that I have experienced in this journey, you know, it's been five years already, is understanding that um, having control of my own time and my own energy and and understanding um, that I am valuable and that the people that I work with seek and look at me to provide value into their companies, into their organizations has definitely allowed me to sort of like change those dialogues, right, in my head. Um, and so, yeah, like I said, it's been five years. I've worked with so many different organizations and I love, love, love what I do. And I'm just working hard to grow and um take as many women with me along the way <laughs> I love that I just love how it's like that moment when you just know it is and you feel it um and like I said before we started recording like I feel like I know you one percent because of social media but I love seeing of how you've been focusing like on your healing journey and that connection with God and how you bring your family along with that and I know that I'm sure all of that had you know it it all just was well put together and it was just like I just love how you were able to make that leap of faith has how it's like making that bold move of like hey I could do this and then you're already like you're already doing it right so it's just like I'm gonna I'm a badass like I have the tools and resources and all I need is to just find people that will support me so I another little thing I've been seeing I just love the way you your business has been growing as well like hey you're like hey I'm hiring and I need this, I need this um, type of support and I have a full time and I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this. Like she's really killing it out there. And it's just like, you know, as a Latina and also this as a millennial generation, it's like, we don't, we don't see that much as, you know, and it's like, I just love to see how you're empowering women out there to be like, hey, take those passions and talents that you have and turn it into your business. Like just turn that into profit and start small and eventually once you're able to replace your income you could do it or you could do it the way that you did it which is like that's when I feel like people really kick it off it's like hey I gotta make this money so I'm gonna go out there and hustle mm -hmm. <laughs> so I love that thank you so much for sharing that um and like one of the questions that Jana and I have really like said like we really want to hear this from Candy because of the the post that you made the one that we opened up is like why is it so crucial for us to not take our progress for granted? That has <laughs> yeah I <laughs> it's um it's extremely crucial because you we already right so just as immigrants in general right we are coming from a place that we don't feel valued where we live. And then you come to a new place and you don't feel valued where you live again, right? You're not, um, yeah, you're yeah. Made, <laughs> yeah, right. You're not made to feel like you're contributing to anything. Like, you know, we face like all of this racism and all of this stuff. And so, um, we're constantly being fed a certain narrative, right? That narrative that you don't have any value. Like, why are you here? What are you doing? You're not good enough. You know, you're not expected to graduate high school. You're not expected to have college degrees. You're not expected to be financially healthy or, you know, financially stable or even to be a great mom, right? Um, 
And so when you have all of these things going on around you all of the time, if you're not taking the moment to tell yourself, I am doing a good job, right? I might not be, of course, none of us are perfect. Of course, you know, there's always room for improvement. But um, if you're not taking the time to tell yourself, I am doing everything that I can within me. And if you're genuinely and authentically with yourself and knowing that you are doing the best that you can, then you can let go of that guilt, right? If you're not taking the time to tell yourself that, or, you know, whether it's like journaling about it or, or however it is that you, you do that for yourself, um, you can start to let go of those narratives and heal sort of, you know, those little parts of yourself, um, and start telling yourself that it is that you are valuable. I love that. I love how you said journaling, because I remember like what the few, I don't have the consistency with it, but every time I do it, it's just like, that's when ideas mm -hmm. come out and it's like, oh my gosh, like I have accomplished mm -hmm. all of this. I am a badass. And it's like, that's when I really take the step back and reflect. And it's just like, sometimes I'm talking, you know, um, John and I talk a lot about self-love and self-care. And it's like, sometimes writing that self-love letter to ourselves and we're like, oh my mm -hmm. gosh, like I have made it. Um, yeah. And I, I'm, I mentioned to you earlier of how I'm here on vacation and my dad actually is here with my family and I, and he was like, oh, so what's, you know, what's the topic today? I'm like, actually, it's, it's something I struggle with a lot. I talk to you all about, I talk to you about it all the time because you're an entrepreneur and I feel like I have, I haven't done enough as the daughter and the oldest and the, the smart, like, to take your business to the next level or my husband's or I should be doing something or I should be already having my own business. Like I take all of that. And it's like, he told me that I was like, I know I have accomplished, but I don't feel like that's enough because I feel like everything that you have given me, that's the bare minimum I could do. And he's like, no, like for me, like it, my goal was to put you and your brother to the school. And it's like, you, you went for your bachelor's, you went for your master's, you have two kids and you have a great job. Like to me, that's, enough because and I'm like yeah but I still feel you know that I haven't done enough and that's why and and I know Jana feels the same way and it's like she's like yeah but that's the bare minimum I can do for my parents and for myself like I should be at different um levels so definitely I love how you said you know just reflect and put that into journaling so um, yeah, definitely removing the removing the word should from your vocabulary <laughs> big thing um between my husband and I because he hates it when I I'm like you should have did this with our son or something um but when we say should like it, it that's already communicating that we have an internal belief that something is supposed to look the way that that it doesn't look right and so that just means that you need to look at you know your internal belief system and say like why you know instead of instead of telling yourself these things is when you have a certain thought I always ask myself why am I having that thought you know why am I internalizing it that way why am I processing it that way um and I always always which is a, a huge part of my healing journey is I always go back um to my childhood and what I experienced in my childhood you know um and what I experienced and how that's connecting into now and how I, you know, our childhood plays a part in every single thing and all of our belief systems and how we, you know, saw our parents and our struggles. And so what you're saying with like seeing your parent, you know, your, your father as like an entrepreneur and building his business and all of that. So you're carrying, you're internalizing that. Right. And you're, and you're, instead of seeing it as like, this is someone that, you know, um, I can look up to and that can help me. You're seeing it as like, I need to be where he is or I need to be doing more because he did this for me. And so I need to be at that next step, right? And as immigrant children, we carry that a lot. You know, I think that for me, my um, my biggest sort of like motivator is to make worth it what my mom and my father went through to get to where, where we are now, right? Like they went through so much. Um, and if I don't do more or be more or or like I'm always striving for something then I'm not it wasn't their struggle wasn't worth it and that's um something that obviously I'm you know going through and and trying to sort of break that narrative apart and know that you know things and I and I don't know if you saw I did have another post where I, that was a a breakthrough in my one of my therapy sessions that my success is rooted in guilt and so that guilt of I need to be doing more because, you know, my mom left everything that she knew. She went through so much with my father and like we had this, you know, crazy childhood and went through all of these things. And um, 
if I don't continuously improve or move up or do more then you know what was the point of her going through all of that for me um that was honestly probably like a couple months ago so it's very new I'm still <laughs> working through that but um I have a great therapist and so it's it's been cool to just kind of like unload all of these things and, and help and have her helping me connect the dots between my childhood and how I navigate my life now so oh my gosh like I knew that when I saw that post like I, I like I said it's only one percent behind social media but I actually don't feel alone anymore and it's like you know Jan and I like I remember in, in a previous episode it was a therapist. She's like, who do you owe that to? Like, why do you keep beating yourself up? Like, you, who is it that you owe that to? And it's like, we come back to that because it is it is like that. Like, I, I'm glad that you shared that because it's like, I say, but my parents, like, if they have accomplished this, like, they came here with nothing and look, everything they've been able to accomplish. And I've been given everything, like, so easily. Like, why I... I need to be at a level above them, not at the same level as them. And it's just like, to me, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, that's why I feel frustrated. And my dad's like, no, that's enough. I'm like, yeah, thank you for sharing that. But that's not the way that I feel. Like, I feel like I, you know, like me above and beyond, like, oh, I should be able to have retired you guys and et cetera, mm-hmm. because I feel like that's the least I owe to you guys. But um, it is a work in progress. And I'm glad that you're you're at that level because it actually does bring up more, I would say more creativity for your business because you're able to focus and you're like just flourish. And even with your kids, just everything overall, because that's how I feel. Like when I have those moments that I'm like, oh, you know, like I am a badass and I have these wins. I do see the difference in the way that my mindset is, the way that I feel, the way that I interact with people. But when I'm in like those times I'm like just down I'm like oh you know I gotta get I gotta snap out of this so I love how you were saying remove the should (laughs) that's definitely something that um we should all put into practice so there was another thing that we were going to ask like how to not feel trapped but I love how you know we just went into that of how you know when we are so focused on hey what is the next step but I feel trapped. Like, it's like, I think that's how you, you said it perfectly, but you want to add anything on is like, remove the should and just focus Mm -hmm. on like, Hey, this is what I'm doing. And, and this is not a trap. Like this is a work in progress, but if you have anything else to add, feel free to. Um, it's, (laughs) I don't, (laughs) yeah. Um, but just in case I'm like, oh my gosh, like I can't be like run my mind. Like it's, that's legit how I am feeling. Like I owe it to my parents and I felt like it was, that was not a legitimate reason, but it, it does come down to childhood because like to me, my upbringing was, oh, you're smart. And oh, you're going to be the, the one that's going to take over the business and you're the, the oldest daughter. You got to take care of everything. Like, and it shows like now it is true. Like I try to Un- uncover all of that and, and it does come down to that and I still as an adult you know I'm I'm being told that there's these expectations of me and it's like am I really there <laughs> so mm-hmm. it, yeah it I think does. uh one of the things that we don't talk about enough is the guilt that we have with with our privilege mm-hmm. um like we you know we grew up a certain way and so then our lives and not in it it doesn't apply to everyone, right? Like, I, I think that there's um a lot of us that kind of like took what we were given and did the most that we could with that. And so now we live a much more privileged life than what our, our parents did and, and what our childhood looked like. And so there's so much guilt that I carry sometimes around, you know, being able to take the trip that I wanted to, or, you know, right now, like we we're living in this like suburb life, right? After we moved uh, to Georgia. And so- We spent so much money on kids' sports and, like, activities and all this other stuff. And my husband and I were always, like, these privileged kids, like, what is going on? Um, And you you realize that you're carrying guilt a little bit of that. You know, sometimes I struggle with being okay to spend a certain amount of money on something or, you know, to do, do whatever, you know, right? Because, like, we worked for it. We've done what we needed to do for it. But then um, sometimes I think about, you know, 
if you know if I would tell my mom how much I just spent on this like she would be like what in the world um and so working through that too is has been has been tough I think uh, one of the, the biggest things with uh parenting is like how can we instill some of these like same values that we we learned mm-hmm. growing up kind of like the resiliency piece and knowing that you have to work hard for things um but also giving them this privileged lifestyle that we did not have and being careful to mm-hmm. not overdo it um because when you know you grew up with nothing you want to give your children everything um mm-hmm. and so there has there's like that fine line and I don't think anyone has discovered but that balance yet so I love that. I am. Uh, I have guilt all the time. Like I remember, I don't know, about four weeks ago, my brother's like, "Hey, what are you doing?" It's it was Friday morning. I'm like, "Well, I'm I'm working." And he's like, "Well, I want to take the kids to the to the beach, and you want to come?" I'm like, "Well, I could go in the afternoon after I'm done with work. I could finish a little bit earlier." And I remember arriving to the beach at. 5 p.m. and I just had the huge guilt, and I'm messaging my parents like. Look at these people on their boat. They're your age. You should be the ones here. And I'm telling my brother, like, Eddie, like, are you thinking about mom and dad right now? Like, they're over there at the store, still grinding. And we're over here at the beach at 5 p.m. with our kids. Like, that's something we never got to do with our parents. And we're over here doing it. And it's like, how can I stop thinking about all of that? And it's just like, um, you, that's the perfect word of how to avoid that trap is to let go of that girl. Like, yes, we have worked for this. We, we do deserve this. Um, it's I feel like it's okay to feel it, but then it's also to understand that, yes, we, we do have the privilege, but we have worked for it. And that's something that we're, you know, breaking those generational thoughts and, and, and guilt that for our kids, like, hey, that's going to be normal for them. And that's okay for them to feel that way. So I, I love how you put that, like, that really is a trap. Like, I feel for many of us, the trap is that, it's the guilt. It's like, hey, mm-hmm. if I focus on something else, I may not be putting my kids as a priority. Or if I put my kids as a priority, I may not be focusing on my career. It does come down to that key word of guilt. So, um, and I know you shared, you know, uh, an experience of that, but is there like a personal, a, a different personal experience where you were recognizing your progress made a significant impact that you would like to share at all? Um, yeah, I would say just my business overall, um, starting out as just like, let's just see what happens and having just one project. Um, and then, you know, within a year I was able to double what I was making from my salary, right? Like I doubled my, whatever my salary was, um, (laughs) and then to get to where I am now, where I have a six figure business. And that's like, (laughs) sometimes I'm like, what is this? You want to paint yourself like, like, wow. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Because it's all I'm doing is you know, pouring my heart and my passion into something, you know, and and recognizing, I think one of the biggest things was recognizing um, what my gifts are. And I I preach about that a lot. And I I feel like there's um, a lot of people that kind of like don't hone in on that, because when you really hone in on what your gifts are, that is where your passion is. And that is, and if you, if you can learn to monetize that, then you're going to blow up. Right. And I knew always, um, my mouth always got me in trouble. Always, always, always. Even when I was in the military, like even at boot camp, I was getting in trouble with the sergeants. Like it was just, it's always been bad. Um, and so I learned, and honestly, I was, I remember one day I was um, reading the Bible. This was a while ago. And I was just looking, you know, kind of like reading through. And I found, I can't remember the Bible verse right now, but I found this this Bible verse that basically says, you know, like your voice has been given to you. Your voice, you know, is, is your instrument. And I was like, this is speaking to me. Like, this is my gift from God. And I need to figure out how I'm going to use it to um, do better for his people. Right. And so that I aligned that with understanding that I wanted to do more on that macro level, like I was talking about before and and changing systems. And so 
in these five years that I've been working, I've been able to work into these amazing, amazing projects where, you know, I am using my voice and advocating for people that don't even know that these projects are going on that are supposed to like make it better, you know, for them. But in reality, their voice isn't even included in in what's in these projects. And so um, because I lived through that, the same thing that they're living through and going through those things, you know, I, I can say, hey, this is not okay. And this is how it needs to be. And we need to be including them in these services and in, 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 um, in the decision making of all that. So I think overall, that has been the, the biggest impact is me understanding what my my gift is and how to use that gift um, to give back. And I know that a lot of people, you know, prefer not to be in a room with me because I'm going to tell you how it needs to be said. And I don't, you know, hold back on, on how things need to be said. So, um, but yeah, that's, yeah, that's been it. And that's what we need. Like, I know at work, I have a friend and it's like, when I started there, they're like, how do you, how is she just talking to you? Like, she doesn't talk to anyone. And it's like, you know, people would say like, she's not easy to handle. And it's like, because you guys can't handle the truth. So <laughs> it's like, you gotta have, you know, people like that to put you on the spot. If not, you're not even growing and no one's really, you know, like just like I, I'm always asking for feedback and always saying like, don't tell me I did a good job. Don't, don't like, you know, I live in Michigan. I'm like, don't do, do the Michigan nice on me. Like I want you to be direct with me. And it's like that, that's not helping me at all. Um, But yeah, that's awesome. You go girl, just how you were just doing the same thing you were doing and now just doing it for yourself. That's, that's just amazing. And, and I, that's actually something that I was telling my dad before. I'm going to keep mentioning my dad. Sorry. <laughs> Just because I had a brief oh, that's conversation good. That's, yeah, he's before here, yeah. recording. He's like, aren't you going to do your hair? I'm like, oh my gosh, my hair is horrible. Like with the humidity here in Dominican <laughs> Republic. And I'm like, I'm going to put lipstick on and that's right. going to be my thing. <laughs> um, but I was telling him of how like that, I'm all, were you going to say something? No. Okay. No, I was just saying you look great. <laughs> Thank you. But I was telling him like that, you know me, I'm like purchasing courses and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to be the thing because I do talk about that. Like, it's so easy for me to um, recognize the things other people are good at and tell them turn that into profit. Like even, even from high school, like I remember people telling me my, the few friends that I've always had, it's like, they're like, you don't have like normal conversations. Like, you know, people are usually gossiping and talking about the, the things that are in and I would just be like oh so you know you you draw well or you're into fashion design or you um are so good at just helping people build their resumes or building their career like you should have I'm always talking about like doing your own side hustle like that's for me I, I'm a strong believer everyone should have their side hustle because it's like that's how besides you know having extra income and building wealth but it's really like what really drives you. And I feel like what really helps you wake up in the morning and just feel like this is my drive. Um, but then I feel stuck. I'm like, I'm not doing it. Um, so it's like, it's like, why is it so easy for me to recognize in others what they're good at, but not for me? Not? And I just say, I know that the day that I just kick it off, I'm going to be a badass because I feel like I already been through all of that stuff, like trying little things. And it's just like, mm, I don't know, this is for me. So I just thank you so much for sharing that of how, you know, when people, when you recognize like, hey, I have been able to have that significant impact. So for all of you listeners out there, it's like, hey, take a step back and think about what is it that you're really good at right now? What is it that people are constantly mm -hmm. telling you you're good at? Or what is the type of topics that people go and ask you to talk about? Like that is really what you should be monetizing. So I love Candy and how you're able to do that. And, and I just loved how you were like, hey, in less than a year, you were able to, you know, just double that income. So with that is, you know, progress is not always linear. So is, are there, I know you have dropped some gems on, you know, take the word should out and the guilt, but is there any other tips that you can offer us to embrace our current journey with the ups and downs? Because it's not easy. You know, it's like, I'm sure in your business, you're like, 
I'm just gonna give up. I'm gonna go back and oh, yeah. and, and and just have the boss because it's it, it's it's money yep. that I know that's secure. But then you're like, no, like I am doing this. I am sticking to this because everything that's good is not easy, but it's like not linear. Also, so if there's anything that you can give us, that would be great. Yes, I have. I can't tell you how many times. It's like every couple of months, I'm like, I'm just going to look for a job <laughs> because it's so much work. And then, you know, with having um, clients, you know, I'm working right now on more of like um, stabilizing the business, um, but there's like ups and downs, right? So there might be a point where I, I might not have a lot of clients and then there's a point where I have a lot of clients. And so um, honestly, two, was it last, last year? Last year was a great financial year for my company. And so I was not smart about that and we were just spending it. <laughs> and so then this year, um, I unfortunately went through something, which was the first time I went through that. Um, one of my clients had to significantly cut um, the pay for one of the projects and which uh, was, was a huge loss for my company and then also for, uh, you know, for our home. And so I was like, I cannot go through this again. <laughs> this is like us having to question like, oh my God, what are we going to do? And then me have feeling like the pressure to find another client. And I'm like, I was, we were not smart last year. We were, I was making all of this money and we were just kind of like, let's take all these trips and let's do all of these things instead of, you know, being financially smart and like putting money away and saving money away. And so that's uh, what we're doing now this year. I'm being very strict with myself and like giving myself a certain salary. And I'm like, I am not paying myself more than this. Um, so that I can um, have that, the finances to be able to hire an assistant, to be able to, you know, stabilize my company. But um, with your question, I feel like, you know, one of the things that I do is I, when I'm starting to feel like that, um, I make a list. I tell myself, okay, like, you, first of all, what you're thinking isn't true. Right. And so second of all, let's just make a list of everything that you have done. Just maybe whether it's this week, this month, the last couple of months, just this year. And that truly has helped me so much because we, we obviously we're involved in everything that we do. Right. And so we know what we've done, but it's not always top of mind for us. And we need those reminders. Um, so I am, I like just going through and like make a list when I'm having a really bad week when I'm in the, in the zone of like, I just want to give up. I'm just going to look for a job. It's happened so many times <laughs> every couple of months. I'm like, let's just see who's hiring. Um, so I make that list and I remind myself, like, I am, I'm on the right track. I'm doing all the things I'm supposed to be doing. You know, the clients are coming in everything is going great. Like we're financially stable. And so for me to, you know, question something based off of an emotion that I'm feeling right now isn't the right thing to do you know don't you know one of the other things to with that is not to make any sort of like quick decisions when you're feeling like that um because if I you know were to play into that many years ago I wouldn't be I wouldn't be where I am now right I would have just gotten another job and just been wherever I would have been with that but um I'm happy to have had people along the way you know that I have uh, other business owners that are successful that I can, I will call or text. I'm like, Hey, like it's been a rough week or I'm going through this, or this is what just happened. And they're, they're just, they're sending me those reminders, you know, to not give up, to not give in. Um, and so having like those small one, having that, um, that circle around you, that support circle, but then two, having, you know, ways to remind yourself that you're on the right, right track is, is, is key. Yeah, I love that. And that applies for anything. It's just like, hey, if you're that mom staying home and you're like, that's your, I, that's like two jobs right there because you're taking care of the home and the kids. And you're just like, hey, I'm stuck. I, I should be out there making money also. Like, I'm going to find a way to make money at home, but I want to make more. Or you're out there in your career. Like, um, this is not where I want to be. Like, I could be doing something else or making work. So I just love how you just said, hey, sit down, write it down, and find that circle of support. That's the most important thing, always having that one person to talk to because that is so true. I remember sometimes when I'm the most frustrated, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to um, be impulsive and do this and, and say that. And it's just like, maybe that was not the right thing to say or to do because 
just because that was a down moment doesn't mean that was the right thing, the right step to take. So I love of how, you know, to not take those impulsive actions. Um, and with you, it's like, I, I think that's all part of the growth, you know, like, I hope you weren't beating yourself up too much because that's like, it's so good that it happened early in your, in your, you know, business growth, that lifespan of your business, because it's like, now you're like, Hey, I'm, this is the steps I need to take. And it shows like everything in our life. It's like, sometimes we're like, why did this happen to me? And, and oh my gosh. And, and then you're like, wait a minute, like, this is really setting me up for when I am bigger and better because when I am starting, you know, at, at this age of my life, if I already went through this, like I could just imagine of how well I'm going to handle this further down in my life with anything in our lives, basically. So thank you for, for sharing that because it's like you were specific about your business, but then it still relates to everything. If we stop to think about it, it relates to everything in our lives. Like I remember going through things. I'm like, how is, how has all of this already happened to me? And like, and and I'm not even at that time would say I'm like and I'm and I just I'm not even thirty years thirty years old yet and it's like all of that set me up for the mindset and to start believing in myself and to grow so um so thank you but then at those times I did make decisions when I was in my downs you know so it's like those are the things I regret I'm like I should have not said that or done that yes. <laughs> So um, it's so dangerous. So dangerous <laughs> to be in those emotions and have a conversation with somebody that you shouldn't be talking to uh -huh. or making a decision, and you have no one around you telling you, um, "No, that is not a good yeah. idea." So awesome. So I mean, just before we end our conversation, I just feel like the hour always goes by so fast, but. Is there anything, you know, we were talking about a lot about the feeling stuck or frustrated, but besides, you know, the journaling um, and stopping to make those reflections, like, is there any advice that you would give to our listeners who might be feeling stuck or frustrated about where they're currently in, an, in their journey and their progress? Um, yes, I would definitely say to do the internal work. Um, you know, like we talked about, it's it's feelings of guilt or feelings of we're not where we're, we feel like we should be. Um, and it's all, we have all of these different messages around us and we're internalizing them in different ways. Um, and I think it's super important to be aware of the message that you're receiving and also the message that you're giving out to your children as, as moms. Um, and so to so just be careful of how you're internalizing those messages and being aware um, growing your relationship with God, that is huge, huge, um, to live out, you know, your life by God's word and to just reaching out and asking God to like be part of your life and, and, um, asking the Holy Spirit to be in the presence with you as you're like reading the word and learning the word and applying that word into your life. Um, and also going into therapy, I am a super advocate for therapy, um, therapy, especially when you go into therapy, looking to, um submerge yourself in your childhood trauma and how that is playing into who you are now that's going to teach you so much about yourself and going to teach you really when you have those internal thoughts or that internal narrative where you're telling yourself you know these negative things you're going to start to learn how to speak yourself out of those you know you're going to start to learn honestly who is speaking to you and at what age you know I have um there's different versions of me of all of us inside of us. And when we have certain thoughts, that's a, that's a certain age where we're stuck at. Right. And so therapy is going to help to kind of like heal that part of yourself. You know, for me, I'm like, there's a part of me that's still eight years old. And so this eight year old wants to be loved and, and um, wants to please everyone and wants to make everyone happy. And so I can tell when my eight year old self is speaking to me versus my 18 year old self that didn't care about anything or anyone and said F you to everything. Um, and so recognizing those things and recognizing how to heal your inner child um, so that you aren't feeding your, your, who you are now. Up. I love that. I remember I've been to therapy a couple of times, even especially when I started doing the podcast, I'm like, wait a minute, like if I'm not well myself, how can I be speaking to women out there? Um, and 
And then I stop and then it's like, we got it. I got to go back. I've been telling Jana, but I, every time I start to check those boxes of like what I'm going for, I'm like, I really need to choose what I'm going to go for because I feel like the times I have gone is for different things. Um, and I honest, and I've never touched on the childhood and I know that is it. I do internalize it because I remember going to a workshop and it was about that of how I forgot what the topic was, but I remember going up to the therapist and she's like, wow, you un uncovered in one 45 minutes what takes a couple of sessions. I was like, <laughs> it comes down. And then I was, and I remember saying like, it comes down to as a young age, I was given the responsibility and the expectation to be above and beyond. And it's like, I, and I do know that's something that um, I struggle with. So thank you so much for sharing of how, hey, that eight-year-old girl is still in you. And you, now you're like speaking to her and now you're like telling you I'm proud of you and look at everything I have done and, and it's mm -hmm. okay. So I think, um, thank you so much, so much for sharing that because I don't feel like a lot of us really go back to that. And I know that in therapy, it always goes back down. What are your childhood traumas? Because that's what you've been carrying along all these things and all these triggers and it's just like once you like start to identify those triggers you're like wait a minute this is why I'm feeling this way because sometimes I'm triggered and I'm like why am I feeling this way I'm like oh well all of these events happened like that's how mm -hmm. <laughs> then one day yeah. this is everything that happened but that's it takes work to start identifying those triggers and um yes. and like sorry but I could keep going on like I remember one of my first sessions was for they're turning those negative thoughts into positive thoughts and that was some work for me to get them because that was something I grew up with like around a lot of negativity and I'm like I gotta work on that because just because I grew up around negative people doesn't mean that's okay for me to be negative so mm -hmm. it, that that is really something the advice of you know on our on our journey it goes back to all of that and for all of our listeners we you guys know we have therapists on here all the time and we're always talking about mental health and self-care self-love because it all comes down to that and I just love how Gandhi you were able to share all of that because it it comes down to that like many of us overlook it so but thank you so much for um being here today but besides that like if people want to go find you for your business um where can our contacts where can our listeners contact you like your Instagram or a website um, yep, I have an in, or I have Instagram, my personal, my business. So at Kamai Strategies on any social media platform, or um, at Candy C Isabel on um, Instagram, and then I do have my website. If you want to check out my website, www.kamaistrategies.com. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna wrap it up. I usually give homework, but it's like I feel like I can because <laughs> I say like if you took the time to listen to this episode, I don't want you to just listen to it and um, just go along here day. But this is Mujeres, this is really what I, I would say of before, after you listen to this episode, mark it on your, open up your phone right now, mark it on your calendar and say, I'm gonna take the time to myself and I'm gonna write down everything that I have accomplished so far. And then I'm gonna put yes. like, and then next to that, put how did that make you feel? And I would say mm -hmm. just, during your ups and down moments or when you're feeling stuck, go back to that list and mm -hmm. just embrace it and clap for yourself and remember the people that were there around you because sometimes you feel like you don't have a circle of support because it's hard because there are so many people that come in and out of your life at different points. But once you start connecting the dots with those wins and those emotions, you'll see that there are still some people that are out there rooting for you that you may have not contacted in a while. And you're like, wait a minute, you were here at this moment. You sent me a message when I posted this win. You did this, you did that. And it's like, start building that small circle for you to have that support of when you have those ups and downs, when you're feeling stuck. Um, because you are a badass. God made you unique. And just being you, that is your superpower. So thank you so much for tuning in. And hasta la próxima. Ciao.